I'd like to uh, preface this little stream, stream, recording, by giving a shout out to the U.S. Postal Service because nothing says healthy, sanitary, and a good idea like taking a box that probably has food in it and putting it in a mailbox when it's 93, 90 some degrees outside. A nice metal one. After you've already delivered the mail. So no one knows that you've delivered this particular package. So it sits out there all day from 12 o'clock in the afternoon until, oh, I don't know, this morning when I realized it was out there. So if there's anything chocolate in this package, it's 100% gonna be melted and hopefully I don't die from eating anything in here that's been spoiled. Now then, where are we going today? Yeah, South Korea. I was hoping it would be. Hopefully everything in here is okay, U.S. Postal Service. Here's our card. Here is the uh, questions, answers, things, ratings. We all seen it. We all know what's going on. Booklet. Huzzah. Ooh. And yes, fun things. But first, we read. Because when do we not read? <coughs> Have you eaten rice? Who hasn't? If you go to South Korea, don't expect, hey, how are you, as a greeting. Well, you can expect it, but it doesn't mean that you're going to get it. Expect something more along the lines of, oh man, why would you have any... Okay, I'm just going to spell it out in this video down below so you can see what I'm going to attempt to say, and I'm going to butcher it 100%. Hi, South Korea, here's looking at you. Um, oh my gosh, Bep Meo Gyo Soyo. Not even going to try it again. It's one big long word. Which translates over to, apparently, have you eaten rice? God knows what I actually said. After the Korean War, food was hard to come by, so this was a polite way of inquiring if the person you were meeting had eaten or if they needed food. The phrase has persisted to this day, and particularly with older Koreans, it replaces a welcome like, hello. I like that idea. That's kind of neat. As far as the answer to the question, after you're done with this box, you can definitely say yes. You'll have plenty of rice in the form of both an interesting little cake and a hard candy with an unusual but common flavor. And we know that rice is nice, but don't worry, there's much more to this box. Chocolate cakes, punch and ginger candy, snacks that look like noodles, and are noodles. There's a lot to explore in one of Asia's greatest culinary destinations. Enjoy your adventure this month, as well as the special bonus item we've included. Ah! We hope you use it to explore more of the world's cuisine in South Korea and beyond. I'm kind of actually sad that I didn't upgrade um, this particular box, because so far, I think all the boxes that I've really, really liked have come from that particular area of the world. Um, everything on the eastern side, from my perspective, <coughs> has been very lovely and I've enjoyed it very, very much. They do look like ramen noodles. So let's eat these first, because I'm hungry and it's giant. Are those chopsticks? Wait a minute, hold on. Hold the phone! Oh! Are these the bonus items? Wait, 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 wait. 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 Oh, they're metal. They are! Bonus item! Universal Yum's Korean Chopsticks. Dude, cool! I have a pair of chopsticks, but they're really more decorative than anything. I'm aware everyone uses wood chopsticks in square. Anyway, for an extra special bonus item this month, you're getting a pair of custom Universal Yum's Chopsticks. If you've ever eaten Chinese takeout, getting a pair of free chopsticks probably doesn't sound that exciting, but there's a bigger story behind this gift. Most Asian countries, from China to Japan to Vietnam, use chopsticks made from either wood or bamboo. Korea is the exception. They only use metal chopsticks, and there's a good reason why. During the, I'm gonna screw this up again, um, Bakje period in Korea, from 18 BC to 660 AD, Korean royals used metal chopsticks as a way of protecting themselves from being poisoned. They believed that metal would tarnish the presence of poison. All Koreans began following this practice, and having metal chopsticks became a status symbol with special pairs being passed down through generations. Koreans have kept up the tradition and today most prefer metal chopsticks as more environmentally friendly option than disposable versions. Oh, that's, yeah, true. While we're not expecting these to be a family heir become a family heirloom, a pair of metal chopsticks is a nice addition to your silverware drawer. Plus, they especially come in handy if you're worried about being poisoned. They won't. We all know that, but that's okay. That's cool. Ooh, fancy. Oh, they're even... I don't actually know if you'll be... I'm going to try it, but it's actually got the little universal yums. Ta-da! Cool. Ooh, and they got, like, little grooves on the... Nice! That's neat! Thanks, guys! That's cool. Also, did not know that uh, metal chopsticks were a thing there. So, learning new things all the time. So this, we're going to do this first, because it 100% looks like ramen. Also, it tells you, like, on the back how to enjoy Beat the crap out of it, sprinkle the spices into it, shake it up, and then eat, 
eat it up. Works for me. Mm, pronunciation is difficult. Uh, Bugoji Pushu Pushu Snack. Stop. Before you open the snack, there's a little work required. First, while the wrapper is still sealed, you'll want to squish the noodles inside the packet. Step on it, pound it with your fist, whatever works to get these noodles into bite-sized chunks. Once this step is finished, open the package and locate the seasoning packet. Hopefully it doesn't break. Get the process. Rip it open, pour it over the crushed noodles, then seal the top of the bag with your hands and start shaking. When the seasoning has spread evenly over the noodles, they're ready to eat. Yes, you're about to eat uncooked noodles as a snack. Don't look at us, it's very common in South Korea. You know what else is common? The flavoring you poured on top. It's meant to taste like a famous Korean dish. Wobugoji? Uh, or grilled beef is marinated with a mix of sweet Korean pears and soy sauce. And this seasoning mimics the flavor. Um, it actually originated in North Korea, and we can't say the same for this push push Though we can't say the same for this push push snack. Uh, maybe someday it can make it over there. Okay, so... So am I eating ramen? Like, is that what the noodles are? I don't want to smash it up too much. I want some bigger chunks. Don't boil it. Crunch it. Oh, okay. There's the flavorings. Like, I'm brief. Okay, so I smash it up. I want, like, too many tiny pieces. It straight up just looks like ramen. <laughs> Why not? Alright, here's the seasoning packet, which also looks like... We all know what ramen packets look like. We've all eaten ramen. We love ramen. I prefer uh, creamy chicken myself for ramen. It smells like I should be cooking it. <laughs> I wonder what it would taste like cooked. Oh, the pulse of All right. I think that's good enough. Alrighty. I kind of wonder why they make you do that. I guess for funsies? I don't know. So, uh, cheers. Or whatever one might say in South Korea. I'm not opposed to eating ramen raw. I know there's a lot of recipes that actually require it for the crunchiness. Like, I have a no-bake cookie thing as that. bad. It's different. I mean, you know. It's still, it's, I guess it's because I'm used to eating ramen in a cooked form. It feels like I should be cooking this and not just being like a weird person and eating it raw with the stuff on it. But it's not bad. It's pretty good. Kind of like a really weird version of chips. I am really curious about what it would taste like cooked though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But the flavoring is good. It's nice. It tastes exactly like, um, I guess it would describe with the meat and there's a little bit of sweetness going on. I appreciate it. Let's do one more thing before I go because for funsies, why not? Um, so there's, I found this thing. It's kind of squishy. Um, I don't know. Let's find out. So this is, um, Lotte? Lotte? Mm. Chocolate rice cake. Oh, sweet. Korean rice cakes, or there's a lot of double consonants in here. Tiok. Oh, Sorry. Are a lot different from the puffed low calorie version of rice cakes in the US. Made from a sticky paste of pounded rice, these are a central part of Korean cooking. For breakfast, they're dipped into a peanut and honey sauce. For lunch, they might be stir fried with vegetables and a little meat. During dinner, they're folded into rich, spicy stews and become the centerpiece for a street food called. <laughs> Tiok Boki? <clears throat> which you'll read about later. Rice cakes cover all three meals, and then some, because these chocolate-covered cakes are meant for dessert. Sweet. Chocolate. Mm -hmm. Chocolate-covered rice cake. Oh my god, you guys. What is this miracle? South Korea. Your magic. It did melt a little bit, but um, it didn't, like, stick to the package or look terrible or terrifying in there, so... It is definitely squishy. 
a rice cake. Just smell chocolate. Ooh, it's like, okay. So not what I was expecting at all. Um, it kind of reminds me of the, with Japan, the dipping thing that I had. Because the, the texture of the rice pounded up is kind of along the same lines. Squishy. I wasn't expecting more chocolate to be folded in there, which is interesting. Oh good. I don't think I ever would have expected rice and chocolate to be good bedfellows, but this works out um, very well. I can see some people maybe not liking it for the texture, but I'm fine. All right, South Korea, so far you're doing uh, pretty well. I'm enjoying things so far. Kind of wish I'd gotten the bigger box, but that's okay. I'm grouchy. Let's eat some food. Let's go with the... Some hot chips. Hot! When you're angry! About things. Anywho, more stuff I can't pronounce. Uh, Teok Boki snack. This snack just looks like a plate of penne pasta. It does, but we promise that uh, we're in the correct country. Italy, right? Just kidding. These noodle lookalikes are a critical part of a famous Korean street food called whatever I can't pronounce that I tried earlier and not gonna try again. Long cylindrical rice cakes that resemble noodles are cooked then with marinated beef and a mix of vegetables in this cherished dish. You get to try the best of street food sensation through this snack. Expect a kick of spiciness at the start, followed by a lingering sweet aftertaste. I like spicy and sweet. I like what we got here. This pepper's having a good time. Look at him. He's all about it. He's so happy. Those are when in doubt. Get some blades. They do look like penne pasta. It's kind of cool. Smells good. It smells, uh, not like particularly spicy, but, uh, I don't know. Different. Interesting. It's very red. Very, uh, you know, whatever. Ow. I kind of got the sweet first. Oh, there's a spicy a little bit. And tingly. More sweet than spicy, really. The spicy kicks in later. And it's on the tip of the tongue, now it's in the back of the throat. Interesting. It's mostly sweet, with the spicy just being like an extra... This is the thing it's doing here. And uh, most of it's doing the back of the throat heat thing, rather than in the mouth thing, um, which is always makes me kind of meh. I mean, if you want spice, spice me up. Give it to me. Give me all the spice. Don't do this last minute nonsense. I don't really taste the beef part so much, I suppose. That's supposed to be in here. That's not bad. It's a fun snack. I mean, it's good. It's not what I expected. I was expecting more more heat than what I'm giving, but that's okay. It's still pretty tasty. I might eat these in D-Rage. But there's more to come. I may still be a little spicy, but let's eat some cream cake. Focus! Feels a little squishy. Might be, uh, I don't know what it's like in there. I don't know what's happening in that package. But, uh, might have something to do with the heat, maybe. Anyway. Lotte Muncher Creme Pie. Alright, long, long paragraph. Bear with us because we're about to go on a little trip around the world. Let's start in 1917 in the town of Chattanooga, Tennessee. What the fuck's going on here? There, the Chattanooga... Chag oh, man. The bakery in there. Invented the Moon Pie, a chocolate-covered cake with an alternating layers of graham crackers and marshmallow cream. Nearly 60 years later, in 1973, a Korean man working for a candy company visited the U.S. He tried a Moon Pie and loved it so much that when he returned home to Korea, he went, he went to work developing a similar treat. A year later, the choco pie was created and became an instant hit in Korea. Today, they're one of the most famous snacks of all time. In 2016, the company introduced a new flavor of choco pie, the Montreux Cream Pie, putting a rich French-inspired creme in the middle. From Tennessee to Korea to France, this treat is proof that when you cross borders, you end up with something exceptional. Hot tip, if your cream pie is melted when you receive it, oh, trust me, it's been melted and probably reformed. You can do what the Koreans do, stick it in the freezer or microwave. I mean, if it's already melted, why would I put it in the microwave? 
Both are commonly done with these cakes. Too late, we're eating it as is. It's been melted, reformed, and I don't know what condition it's in. It's gonna be a surprise for everyone involved. Ugh, it's not looking so hot in here, to be perfectly honest. It looks a little, little uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know, we're gonna find out real quick. Oh boy, it's kind of terrible. Terrible. Yeah, that's, uh, well, that's unfortunate. So, anywho, I'm gonna try not to get crumbs everywhere. Um, so this is <laughs> fucking awesome. Good times. This is the cream pie. It's falling apart. It's been smashed and mushed and gushed and melted and reformed and yeah. Let's eat it anyway. Ah. Making such a mess. Thanks, Postal Service. Appreciate it. Still good. I show you the middle, but there's not really a good way to do it. And it's kind of just sort of falling apart as I eat it. There's a lot of crumbs in here and in my box. But it's pretty much as um, as described. It's got this little chocolate coating on the outside, it's got some cake, and then it's got some stuff in the middle. As I said, my mouth is still a little spicy, but um, I can still taste uh, most of the things. It's not really much different from something that you could probably find here. But, you know, makes for a good little dessert. Mm. Here's hoping the next time something like this comes along. Uh, it hasn't been in a hundred some degree heat before getting to my face. Before I watch Die Hard, might as well have some cookies. Ha! Get it? Cookie biscuit in peanut sand flavor. I don't know what that's supposed to taste like. It's either very promising or very interesting. Peanuts, anyway. Makes me think of like the powdered peanut stuff that the other things that we've eaten. I've eaten. You haven't eaten anything. I'm sorry. Get some universal yums. Have some. Anyway, the peanuts aren't particularly common in Korea. There are, however, three notable exceptions to the no peanuts rule of thumb. Number one, man, hmm, dak kang yong, which are chicken wings tossed with sesame seeds, spices, and peanuts. Do hedeok, or a sweet pancake sprinkled with peanuts. And number three, this delicious cookie. Sorry, we mean kook he. The standout ingredient in these soft, crumbly cookies is their thin layer of peanut butter filled with tiny specks of peanuts. You might be tempted to compare them to Nutter Butters, but we think they might just be Nutter Better. Oh, 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 oh puns! Puns, man. You guys. Uh, I'm gonna make a mess again. Packaging! They look a little... A little on the dark side, like they've been maybe cooked a wee bit too long. But, uh, let's go ahead and let's do the cheatsy doodle thing with the- Oh no, that was a mistake! Oh god, no! Uh, so I just, <laughs> just opened it up. Shouldn't have, should have left it alone. But, you know, sometimes with cookies you gotta try the insides too. Oh. Alright, look, hold oh. There's stuff everywhere! I, uh, I regret this decision. I put it back together. Let's eat it like a normal cookie, now that it's in pieces. It is crumbly. Not too bad, though. I feel like peanut sand is a good descriptor for this. It's a very, like, it's one of those cookies that, like, you just crumbles apart. Just brrr, 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 brrr. That's all there is to it. This is very crumbly. Kind of cracker-like, in a way. Without so much crunch, like a soft, you know, where crumbs everywhere on my keyboard. Oh god, that's good. It's just like a like a peanut butter cookie. It's fine. And I've got a pack of four here, so I'm gonna keep eating my cookies. Um, glass of milk would be good with this. Kind of like a typical peanut butter cookie, really. So yeah, just uh, there you go. We go watch our hydrant now. Eat peanut butter cookies. Now that I've had my workout. Let's have a snack, because I'm kind of hungry. And apparently you can have these anytime. Anytime. 
I gotta figure out this focus thing. I don't have to do about it. Anytime milk candy. The mint milk flavor of this candy is a bit of a puzzling creation, but there's something even stranger about this sweet. Between the two mint layers is a feeling of cool, sweet milk. When we say cool, we mean it. The filling is meant to react with your saliva to cool your mouth down. Perfect! We can't exactly pin down the right occasion for this unusual treat. After working out, maybe. Is it after eating for dessert? If your mouth feels hot? We guess we'll just have to look uh, look to the name of the candy to tell you what the best time for it is. You guessed it. Anytime. Wow. What a good, good pick. Of course, next challenge. Opening said candy. And also, I hope it didn't melt. Uh, really stuck to this, uh, this wrapper here. Have it anytime, but you're gonna have to wrestle with it. Alright, so basically we've got very clear you kind of see, I guess, the I guess the, the minty, milky coolness in there, which may or may not have escaped due to heat and a mailbox, but let's find out. It does kind of taste like milk, like, like, cereal bowl milk. That's what it makes me think of. <laughs> I can feel, I run my tongue around the edge there, I can feel the cool stripe of milk, I guess, whatever is in there, minty milk. But I got a ways to go to actually get to it. It's weird. The whole milk thing. That's bizarre. It really does feel cold. Like, on your tongue. I'm getting closer to being in the center. It's just kind of slowly shrinking, but it's keeping its shape in the, the two clear bits. Are still about the same on the inside, but I've, there's a very clear stripe of the cool milk available. And I was curious and kind of went... And I was like, oh, that's cool. So it's like a weird mil minty, minty milk thing. It's not... It's one of those things where it's not bad. Um... It's very odd. Still enjoyable. It's one of those things like when I'm done with it, it's like, so is my mouth. Like, say I was like oh, on someone, is it gonna be gross milky or is it gonna be minty? Like, I don't understand how this is supposed to work. But it's small enough now that I'm gonna go ahead and crunch it. Maybe. Oh, there we go. Reduce the cool milkiness. Mm. Very cool. Very weird how it does that. It like legitimately feels cold. But I guess that's just the the way the mint works, I suppose. I wonder how it would work on like if I'd just eaten something spicy. Like would it actually work work? Or that would just be the illusion and it would just be a mess in my mouth. Alright. Well, I mean, it's like when you breathe in, it's like minty, like if you'd had a mint. But it's still got some of that, that milky aftertaste. Very odd. Interesting. Very unique. You're crazy, South Korea. I like it. Welcome to a location not my room. I'm dog sitting. A giant big dummy dog. But he's adorable. But I wanted to continue eating all my snacks. So, here we go. This is also part of the horrific echo. But this is Choco Haim. These hazelnut wafers are super popular in Korea, but at first we worried they might seem a little boring. So with this snack, we set out to do the impossible, find one thing we didn't like about it. We wanted to hate the crispy flaky vanilla wafer covering, but alas, it had the perfect crunch. Was there something wrong with the decadent chocolate hazelnut filling? Nope. We thought and thought, and eventually we decided the only thing wrong with these wafers is that there aren't nearly enough of them. I will probably agree. <clears throat> This is a very small package. Also, they're probably really crushed because they sound crushed and it feels kind of crushed. And once again, I'm going to wrestle with the packaging. Holy crap. 
Oh wow, yep, crushed. Okay, well, you know. So here's a bit of it. Just sort of falling apart. And then there's the middle bit. I have no idea how this is focusing, but we'll see. Anywho, uh, hazelnut inside of stuff. Cheers. Yep, it's kind of like someone put Nutella in a wafer thingy. That was good. Very good. Just gonna get the rest out of here. <laughs> oh god. Oh no. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a massacre. Oh god. From Zero. Mm. Okay. Pretty straightforward, really. Nothing uh, weird or, you know, weird or wild about that. Um, I'm gonna try to eat the rest of them. It's gonna be a bit of an undertaking considering they're kind of in pieces, but good stuff. Okay. Next up, we have uh, this little doodad. I don't know if it's able to zoom, whatever it's called. But anyway, this is scorched rice candy. When we burn rice on the stove, we have a name for it, trash. When Koreans burn rice on the stove, they have a name for it too. Nuru, nurunji. Nuru, mm, there's a G and a J right next to each other, no idea what that is. In the past, this was typically eaten as a snack or made into a tea called nurunbap. What started in, starting in the early 2000s, its culinary versatility began to be explored. South Korean food companies developed the burnt rice flavor into doughs, ready to eat snacks, instant tea packets, and of course, these candies. I don't know what's happening right now. Enjoy a bit of it on us. Just to remind you, it's meant to taste like burnt rice, and trust us, that's a great thing. Alright. Everyone. Meat dog. Giant horse dog. So we've got just like our hard sucky candy here. Oh, hmm, here's okay. So yeah, right away it's not it's a little sweet. Um, kind of made me think of popcorn at first, actually. Like popcorn kernels or something. But I'm getting like the mild rice bit flavor in here. I can see where the burnt part comes in. Because it does taste burnt. Just cooked. I don't... Hmm. I've been sucking on this for a while. And I kind of like it. I like the how mellow it is. Like it's not like a super sugary sweet like a lot of hard candies are. It's very mellow. Um, I don't mind the, the the burnt rice flavoring at all because it doesn't taste like you're eating. Yeah, obviously straight rice. Like oh, burnt. But it's very chill. So it's pretty good. I'm glad I had two of these because I'm I'm gonna really I think I'm gonna enjoy eating the second one because I like this one. So good times. So today we've got. Uh, to you, not just something like that. Uh, what am Moncher cream pie? No, looking at the wrong one. I already ate the cream pie. <laughs> uh, this is the malang strawberry candy. You might not think you can speak Korean, but you're closer than you think. The Korean word malang is very similar to the English word malleable. Typically, we would just call this stra strawberry milk candy chewy, but we'll switch it up and call it malang. We've got to learn the Korean word for more. So apparently, it's a chewy strawberry. Yeah, snack kind of? Oh, it looks like a bubblegum, kind of. Oh, it's kind of stuck here. It looks like a chunk of bubblegum. Gushy. Hmm, interesting. Oh, yeah. Hmm, that's kind of a fun texture. Look, um, kind of like taffy. A little bit firmer than taffy, I guess. Like a really chill really chill strawberry thing happening here. Hmm. It's not too bad. I'm glad I have two of those because the other one just going to be good. So while I enjoy this, because there's really not much to say about it. It's like a, like a simple strawberry chewy snack. Here's the clue for next month's box. We can't find Eldorado, but we found some golden yums, chips with crazy flavors, a treat called Bum Bum Bum. This might be our best box yet, but we can't tell you why. Just know we're like the singer's hips. We never, never lie. Um. Hmm. I can't remember who sang that song. I, it's one of those ones where I'm like, I know it. I don't remember that time. 
Who knows? Maybe I'll remember it later. Or I'll cheat and look it up later. But, uh, all right, so that was South Korea. I do kind of wish I'd gotten the bigger box because there's a lot of good stuff in there. And I probably would have gotten way more fun things. But that's okay. So on to the next box. Hope you guys had fun watching me eat food. So, yeah, that's about all there is to it. Toodles! I remembered it's Shakira.